Well, amen. Thank you to those who have led us so well in worship as we draw our attention once again to the Word of God. If you would join me in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the worship we have experienced this evening. We pray that it has been worship that has flowed from grateful hearts. And Heavenly Father, as we open up our Bibles now, we are thankful for your word. Though written long ago, it still speaks. It has the ability to judge the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. It has the ability to renew our minds. It has the ability to fill us with hope. We cling to your word now. In a noisy world, we desperately need to hear your voice. So we read our Bibles and we meditate on your word to us. May it fill us with hope. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I remind you of the driving image of our current Sunday evening series. It was in 1952 that Florence Chadwick stepped into the waters of the Pacific Ocean off of Catalina Island, determined to swim to mainland California, a distance of 26 miles. The weather that day was cold and foggy. Florence Chadwick could barely see the boats traveling alongside her there to watch and document her historic effort. Despite the weather conditions, she swam for 15 hours. Eventually, physically and emotionally exhausted, she was pulled out of the water. It was once on a boat that she realized that the shore was less than half a mile away. At a press conference the next day, Florence Chadwick said, all I could see was fog. I think if I had been able to see the shore, I would have made it. There are times when we need to see the shore. There are times when we need to glimpse the other side. Tonight, we continue a Sunday evening series, slowly walking through 1 Corinthians 15, a passage that speaks of the resurrection of Christ, a chapter that gives us a glimpse of the victory provided to us in Christ, a victory for now and for all of eternity. So I invite you to 1 Corinthians 15. We've made our way all the way to verse 42. And we will read through verse 49. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 42, if you're ready for the Word of God, can I hear a big, loud amen? amen. The Scripture reads, picking up on the previous 41 verses, which I'm sure you all remember perfectly. Paul says, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown perishable, it is raised imperishable. 
It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spirit did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have been born the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. Amen to that passage of First Corinthians 15 from it. I've got two words for you. And the first is this, until the resurrection, we bear the image of Adam. I realize we've been in this series for quite some time. Um, We've had a week off from it to hear from Bo last week. Um, Some of the earlier verses might be a little fuzzy this evening. I'll do my best to make good sense of the verses we just read and also connect the dots to where we've been. This passage speaks of a body first sown natural. This passage speaks of our earthly body, our natural body that resembles, that bears the image of Adam. I remind you of the familiar verses that we find in Genesis 2. Let me just read them for you. Genesis 2 Verses 5 through 7. Now no shrub had yet appeared on earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But the streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. In Genesis 2, that God created Adam from dirt. God created Adam from dirt and then placed him in a garden to work it and to care for it. And God gave Adam some very clear and simple instructions. He says, Adam, I've given you all of this. And you can eat from any tree. But God gave Adam the one prohibition. You can't eat from this one particular tree. And when you turn the page from Genesis 2 to Genesis 3, you see Adam, he takes the 
distorted and deceptive word of the serpent over the holy and true word of God. And Adam eats from the one tree he was instructed not to eat. And Adam eating from that particular tree leads him to get booted from the garden. And ultimately, it leads to death. And man has been listening to the voice of the serpent ever since. Adam's sin brought consequences. I'll give you the familiar words from Genesis 3, verse 19. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. This theme has been picked up by the Apostle Paul all through 1 Corinthians 15. He speaks of an earthly body. And the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 reminds us that we have an earthly body, a natural body, and our earthly body was fit. It, it was formed by our Creator. Our earthly body was fit and formed for earth. And it's in your earthly body that you experience joy. It's in your earthly body that you fall in love. It's in your earthly body that you have children. You, your earthly body was fit for earth, and it's in that earthly body that you work. And you experience pain, and you cry tears and you grow old, and you die. And the portion from 1 Corinthians 15 that we read this evening, the Apostle Paul speaks of Adam's sin that leads to death speaks of our sin that leads to death. But he speaks of a better day, a better day to come. We read it moments ago, 1 Corinthians 15, 42 through 44. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Let's dig into that a bit more. That brings me to my second word this evening. In the resurrection... We bear the image of Christ. Until the resurrection, we bear the image of Adam. It's in the resurrection, we bear the image of Christ. This is where I, I realize it was hard to read in that short passage we read moments ago, but the Apostle Paul begins to tie up loose ends. He begins to connect dots. Those who were bound to Adam, like Adam, are banished from Eden and destined to die. But those who are bound to Christ are reconciled to God and will one day experience resurrection. 
As discussed earlier in 1 Corinthians 15. Are you still with me? Can I hear an amen? Are, are we still here? I'm working really hard, guys. I really am. I hope you're, you're hearing this. As discussed earlier in 1 Corinthians 15, the resurrection of the dead does follow a certain sequence. First, Christ was raised from the dead. Earlier in 1 Corinthians 15, described as a first fruit. A sign of things to come. First, Christ was raised from the dead. And at the second coming, when Christ returns, those who belong to Christ by faith will be raised in resurrected bodies. So your earthly body was fit for earth. And in those earthly bodies, you experience joy, you fall in love, you have children. In those earthly bodies, you work and experience pain and cry tears. You grow old and die. Paul speaks of a day to come. A day in which you receive a resurrected body. It wasn't fit for earth. But this resurrected body is fit for a new heaven and a new earth. A place where there's no more pain, no more tears, and no more death. This old order has passed away. And it's here in the passage that we read in 1 Corinthians 15 where the Apostle Paul is looking back to those early pages of Genesis 2 and 3 that he also begins to look forward to a day that we see detailed a bit more in the book we know as Revelation where we get a glimpse of the consummation of all things. When heaven meets earth and those in Christ dwell with God in resurrected bodies. So help me here. Let's think about this. Let's I realize this is hard work. You're saying, Pastor Jeff, this is Sunday evening, right? This is spring break. This is time change, right? We, we, we wanted something light and peppy, and you're making us do lots of hard work. You're going from Genesis to 1 Corinthians 15. Now you're bringing up Revelation. This is a lot of hard work. I said, who are you telling, right? Uh, this is hard work, but let's think about this. It's in Genesis Three, that we learn of earth's first transformation. Adam and Eve are in the garden and they partake of the prohibited fruit. It's a story of the human fall and God's judgment. In Revelation 20 and 21, we see Earth's final transformation. We're likely less familiar with those chapters, but they speak of Christ's return and final judgment. They speak of a new heaven and new earth. If we think about this, earth's transformation begins and concludes God's great story that we see unfold in the Bible. But there's more. It's in Genesis that God plants a garden on earth. 
It's in Revelation that God brings down a new garden in a new Jerusalem upon a new earth. It's in Genesis that there's no sin, death, or curse. It's in Revelation that there's no more sin, death, curse. It's in Genesis that the Redeemer is promised. It's in Revelation that the Redeemer returns. It's in Genesis that paradise is lost. It's in Revelation that paradise is restored. And in this series, we're in 1 Corinthians 15, where the Apostle Paul looks back at all that God has brought us through and he aims us forward. He, he points us to the other side. He gives us a glimpse of the shore and all that God will lead us to. He speaks of a better day to come. We read it moments ago, 1 Corinthians 15. Back half of verse 44 through 49. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. It is in the resurrection that we bear the image of Christ. I conclude tonight with a true story that I love to tell, a, a true story I love to slip in any time when it seems appropriate. It's a true story about the funeral of Great Britain's Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Long before his death, Winston Churchill planned his own funeral. A man after my own heart. I have done the same. Long before his death, Winston Churchill planned his own funeral, and he did so with the hope of the resurrection and with hope of eternal life. He, he instructed that after the final benediction, after the final prayer, there would be a bugler up high in the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral. And after that final prayer, a bugler high up in the dome would play taps, the universal sign that the day had ended. But Winston Churchill didn't want that somber note to be the final note played. After the prayer, a, a bugler high in the, the dome would play taps, a universal sign that the day had ended. Uh, but on the other side of the dome, Churchill had instructed a bugler to play reveille. The universal sign that a new day had dawned and it was time to rise. Sometimes we need a glimpse of the other shore. Some of us can see the shore quickly approaching. 
May you not fear, but may you be filled with hope. Some of us feel as if the shore is just too far away. And a life of faithfulness seems like a task too tall. May 1 Corinthians 15 give you a glimpse of the victory provided to you, not by your own strength, but through the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead to give us life. May we cling to the victory provided by the resurrection of Christ. On good days, may it fill us with hope. On difficult days, may it fill us with hope. May we not trust in our own strength. May we not trust in man's wisdom. But may we trust and the cross, and the empty tomb, which gives us life now 